Dreams, dreams, dreams. Seemingly stuck in development hell since 2015. Many, myself included, didn't think we'd ever see this game, but boy were we wrong. Released last year in the early access-ish kind of a period, the game's been fully released now. Little Big Planet has played a great part in my gaming history and I absolutely love the series, so I was really excited to see what Media Molecule could achieve. Like with all games on this channel, let's delve deeper and talk a bit about the game. Before we get too deep into the Dreamiverse, please subscribe and follow me on Instagram and Twitter, links below. So let's jump into Dreams. Unfortunately you won't have a cool British guy narrating this whole video, but we can all dream, can't we? See what I done there? So anyway, on from that terrible pun. Dreams! What a great idea! Media Molecule needed a step up from Little Big Planet, and it's very clear that they succeeded in that regard. Some amazing things were done in Little Big Planet. My friend, for example, built a full Minecraft level with a working mouse cursor and menu. It was so fantastically well done, and if someone could do that with the tools in Little Big Planet, God knows what anyone can do in Dreams. Now, the tools provided in Dreams go way above anything that could be done in Little Big Planet. I bought it in an early access just for the sculpting and I had some great fun with it even though I'm absolutely terrible at it. Many people that are more technically and artistically gifted than me have done great things with the tools that Media Molecule has provided. I'm sure we've all seen the full English breakfast that was modelled in Dreams. It's amazing that someone could do it. I'm sure it took hours if not days. The artistic tools are so great and it's clear to see from levels like that. Many people have recreated models of characters and levels from other games in Dreams. And yeah, it's cool, I guess. But this brings me on to my first point. Why? The Fallout 4 level is great, fantastic actually. Everyone has the same reaction. I can't believe someone could do this, what a great job. Now I played the level, yes it's cool, the shooting probably feels better than Fallout 4, but why play this over Fallout 4? Why play a game that's built in a game that has very little menu functionality, slightly jankier graphics, only some dialogue and quests over a fully fleshed out 50 plus hour game that you can buy for less than 20 euro? It just makes absolutely no sense to me. That's not the only level like this, there are loads of other recreations of other games like Sonic Adventure and Mario 64. It's probably a good way to get used to the tools and dreams, but it still begs the question, why should I play this when I could just play the actual game? Now I think there are a few sides to blame for this. There's obviously a reason why we only see the recreation levels, not the original levels. So firstly we'll talk about Sony PR. This is such an impossibly difficult game to market, because how do you market a game engine? At least Little Big Planet had Sackboy who was such an adorable character that the marketing practically writes itself. Sorry Connie, but I don't think you have the same appeal as this little guy. Now it's not all Sony's fault. Many of us gamers are big and ugly enough to do our own research and are clued in on the industry enough to know what Dreams is and know exactly what to expect. But the media don't help this game at all. If you search the top 10 Dreams creations on YouTube, all the videos from major outlets promote things like PT Recreation, Sonic Adventure, Mario and Fallout. I know larger media outlets need to drive traffic to their channel and showing off this great Fallout recreation will make people watch, but someone has to promote the game better. These videos would give Dreams a lot of attention, but I highly doubt it drives sales too much. I'd hazard a guess that a good chunk of the people that watch, say, IGN's 13 Amazing Remakes of Dreams have the exact same reaction as me and they think to themselves, well, this is cool, but why would I buy this game when I could just play the game in the first place? Project Genesis does a good job promoting unique levels, and if you search the best original Dreams creation, it's mostly his channel. Another problem is that many creators are focusing on recreating things. Again, I'm sure it's good practice to get used to the tools and then jump into your own original creation, but I feel the game would be so much more diverse if the creators crafted their own games. The people who are making these dreams are clearly very, very talented people, so why not put that talent and effort into creating an original idea? Now, it's not all bad from Sony PR. They have promoted one Dreams level on their YouTube channel, and it's a completely original creation. I have played the level and the mechanics in it are quite robust. You run around the city and destroy the city rampage style. You have quite the toolkit at your disposal in this level. Shoot lasers, climb buildings, eat and throw things, and best of all, stick your arse out and wiggle your tail around to wreak havoc on the city. Hopefully Sony will continue this in the future. It would be great if they could somehow charge money for games made in Dreams on the PS Store. Just something small like 5 euro per game and the creator gets cut. Now, I'll put gameplay of one called Heroes of Aldrinor. It's a co-op fantasy action RPG. Now, it's a beta build, so there's some jank, but it seems very properly done. This is Dreams at its best. There are three characters that all have their own mechanics and backstory, complete with dialogue between them. Now, it's not voice acted, but it's written. And this is a prime example of Dreams done well. As I just said, the people that make the games in Dreams are clearly brilliant people. I don't have the skill to wrap my head around the logic tools in this game. I tried for a few hours, and I could barely get a platform to move without it blowing up, so I really commend them for what they've done. And this brings me on to my next point. Dreams could be a fantastic tool for inspiring people to get into game development. Just like Little Big Planet done before, I'm certain that Dreams would be a nice introduction to game dev, whether it be on the technical or artistic style, and if so, could be a great thing for the industry as a whole. The tools are complicated enough to make interesting creations with complex AI and art, so who's to say what people could go on to create? 
It could be used as a portfolio for many to show off their technical and artistic abilities to game dev studios. Building a large game in Dreams shows a true dedication to your craft. I'll be interested to see how far stories come in Dreams, and I can't wait to see what levels like Heroes of Algernor turn out to be in the end. Now it would be a bit of a miss if I didn't talk about the single player component of this game, and that is Art's Dream. I haven't completed it yet, but there might be a few spoilers here, so just a warning. So the game takes place in the mind of Art, an ex-jazz musician who left his band and clearly regrets it. The game is told from his perspective and is narrated by him. So far there is a cool mix of three genres in the game. The main part is a point and click adventure set in the real world and you can control art and have to figure out how to get back in your band it seems. The second part is a 3D platformer and the third part is a 3D puzzleist platformer. The characters in the platformer sections are designed well, with two being stuffed animals from art's childhood and then the third being a robot that he created. The point and click part is intriguing and had some singing sections that made me laugh quite a bit because of how ridiculous they were. The platform feels good for the most part. It's kinda hard to show in a video, but the jump kinda feels a bit short sometimes in the action platformer section. The robot character controls the best however. He's really cute and kinda reminds me of Astrobot. He can roll to pick up speed and charge up electricity and he can hover with his antenna. And his eyes change when he hovers which is really cute. I could recommend Little Big Planet for just the single player components, but I can't do the same for this. I'm really enjoying my time with it, but according to how long to beat it's only about 3 hours long, so that means I must be very close to the end. So if you're only interested in the single player, then wait for a sale. I couldn't justify 40 euro for this mode alone. I really hope Sony take their fingers out of their arse and market this game properly. I do think it's best to promote it on social media with trailers and levels because this game will never appeal to the masses, so I think any effort to, to market it that way would just be a waste. I hope they realise what they have on their hands and don't expect it to sell gangbusters. For Media Molecule's sake, and anyways. They're such a creative studio that have made such great games for the PlayStation and I hope they don't go anywhere anytime soon. But please just make a game. Little Big Planet Story was so fun and I think they're at their best when they make games. Not make games for people who want to make games. So thank you so much for watching. I've gained so many subs in the past two weeks and I'm so grateful for all the support. So follow me on Instagram and Twitter and I'll see you all next week.